well, can you believe another week has gone by? My friends, how have you been? I have been good, thanks. I know, you're asking. You're sitting in the car going, Prail, I don't care about how you've been. It's all about me. I know, I get it. I get it's all about you. And it's all about how can we make you better, right? Well, my friend, I get it. We're going to solve that problem today. In fact, you know what we're going to do today? I am going to have a conversation about a topic I've never done before. You know, we, we, we hit up on discovery and we hit up on the art of the cold call and all these wonderful topics. And we have these great people and we hit it kind of five ways to Sunday, multiple times, multiple episodes, nature of the beast, right? But today's session has never been talked about before. And I'm really curious on what your take is going to be. You may agree with me or you may not. But before I get there, I always like to open up and have a little ramble, a little chat, what's going on in my life, what's going, you know, how does it matter to you? And uh, I'll, I'll, I want to share something with you. I've, um, you know, I'm always advocating when I'm talking to sales reps about you've got to reach out multi-channel. You know this, right? You've got to do phone, you got to do email, you got to do social. And, and some of you are scared of the phone. It's okay. Part of it's generational. Part of it's just familiarity. Part of it, it's an unknown. And some of you are afraid of social. I get it. It's all cool. But your job is to use all of the tools that you have available to you. It literally, seriously is because you don't know how you're going to connect with me. So, okay, multi channel, prayer, we get it, email, phone social, blah, blah. I'm tired of hearing it enough already. Okay. But it goes more than that. There's other channels too, right? There's video. So when you send me an email, send me a video. When you use LinkedIn, you can send me a video. So you're touching me on both LinkedIn on social and a video, or you can send me an audio message. All right. You can do that. Now, what's interesting about that? What's interesting about that is that when you leave me an audio message or even a video recording on LinkedIn as one example, you know what you're doing? You're leaving me a voicemail. Now here's the funny part. You don't think of it that way. You go to yourself, you say, oh, that's awesome because everybody's sending text messages on LinkedIn as one of the channels, social, but nobody's sending a voice message or a video slash voice message. No one's doing that. So my message is going to stand out. And you know what? You're a hundred percent right. So if you've not done that, it's easy peasy. Do it because it actually works really well, but it is a voicemail. Okay. Hold that thought. How many of you, when you use the phone, leave a voicemail? Ah, you're, you're hesitating, aren't you? I know you are. Because many of you are saying, some of you are saying, yeah, I do. And I love you for it. But let me guess, your expectations of that voicemail are negligible. Like almost zero. I, I, yeah, I'm leaving it because that's what I have to do. But the other part of you or the other fraction of you out there are saying voicemails are useless and I don't leave them. I just don't even bother. W why? Who checks voicemail anymore? So... I get it, but do you see? Do you see the conflict here? You see that the fact that you can leave me a voicemail on LinkedIn and you're cool with that. That's that's to your advantage. But if you leave me a voicemail on the phone, that's a waste of time. You get it? You get it? Yeah, that's bad. You are. You probably never thought about it that way, but you are in conflict. Let me make it straight for you, folks. A voicemail is a voicemail is a voicemail. So no matter what you do, a you should leave one. Two, it'll make you stand out. Three, it'll give you a reason to follow up with them because you left them a voicemail and there better be a call to action in that voicemail, right? All right. So if we accept that premise for today's conversation, you know what we need to talk about? We need to talk about voicemails because you're not leaving them or if you are, you're doing them wrong. So who's the right guy to talk to on voicemails? Well, it's funny. You know, often I'm talking to all the experts and I know, oh, you know, Mike Weinberg is great for that or Mark Hunter is great for this or Jeb Blunt is great for that or Benjamin Denny, he's great for this. But I said voicemails, who's the go-to guy for that? So 
I reached out to a variety of my circle, my trusted advisors, and I say voicemails. Who do I reach out to for voicemails? And they all said the same thing. And ladies and gentlemen, here he is today. Let me bring on Art Subcheck. This guy is a rock star legend. He's been around for forever. If you don't know Art, he is the president of Business by Phone. Uh huh. Phone? Huh? You see what I'm talking about? Voicemails? He's the author of Smart Calling. All right. You can check him out at smartcalling.com. Oh, it doesn't stop there. The man is not just on my podcast. He's got his own, The Art of Sales. You can see that at theartofsales.com. But Art Subject is one of the, the legends. In fact, I was talking to one of my trusted advisors, and he told me two things. He said, Daryl, when you talk to Art, you got to give him a hard time. Give him grief, because that's the way Art is. He's a good guy, but give him a hard time. And the second part is, Daryl, between you and I, that man is a trailblazer. So I've set the stage. Art, uh... I'm so delighted you're here, man. Welcome to the show. Daryl, thank you. Wow, what what an introduction. And uh, I enjoyed listening to you. I was just going to sit back and, and I'm agreeing with, with everything you said. Well, almost everything. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, my wife almost agrees with everything I say too. And then she corrects me on everything I said. So I love that. So let's just get right into it, Art. I'm kind of curious. Let me just... You know, talk about, uh, you know, the emperor has no clothes. I'll put it right out there. Is voicemail dead? Yes or no? Just start there. Anytime somebody says something is dead, I, I just have to shake my hand, my head, because we're going to make some blanket statement about everybody in the world and every single customer out there. Normally, when somebody says something is dead, they have some kind of agenda or they have something to sell. Now, does that mean that maybe some people aren't listening to their to their voicemail? Perhaps. But does that mean that we should never do it? No. Well, here's the thing. Anybody that says something is dead or voicemail is dead, keep this in mind. You are not your prospect or you are not your customer. And if I have the opportunity to leave another impression, to leave a commercial, after I've, I've already done the heavy lifting, the heavy lifting being all of the research that I did for my call on the slight chance that I might get somebody live, why in the world wouldn't I leave a message? So I love that. I agree with you. Like, and I, and I love that you said you've done the heavy lifting, right? So, and that could be not just that you actually picked up the phone and you dialed. And by the way, kudos, folks, if you've done that, because many of you, as we said, aren't. But you, you've got the contact information. You sourced out the phone number. You might have done some data cleansing, you know. And I really connect with your point about why would you miss another chance to leave and make an impression with your prospect. I don't get it, but they, but they do, they miss that chance. So is it because they're projecting, like you said, you know, you are not your prospect. Are, are we sales folks projecting our own biases upon our prospect or are we in fact, maybe instead scared? So we're at the voicemail stage and the beep goes and boom, we're on and it's stage fright moment. Like what's, why are we so hesitant to leave a voicemail? Well, I don't put myself in the we category, but I, I can only hypothesize about some people. One might be because they are projecting themselves on other people. They may not listen to voicemail. Therefore, they say nobody else does, which, again, is wrong. I listen to voicemail. And uh, for other people, indeed, like you alluded to, it's actually a relief that they got voicemail because now they don't have to talk to a human or put themselves out there. So then they can hang up and go on to the next one. Other people have this false notion that it's a waste of time. Now, let's break this down a little bit. If I have already done, and uh, again, I, I teach the smart calling process, which means that we're doing research prior to our call, we're, we're preparing our opening slash voicemail message, and perhaps we're doing some social engineering, which is talking to somebody else in the organization prior to getting to the decision maker for the purpose of getting some information. So I've already invested all this time. I've put together my messaging. Now, probably about 70% of the time I'm going to get voicemail. How long does it take me to actually leave that message? And that message probably shouldn't be more than maybe 15 seconds, 20 seconds or so. So 
is that a lot of time? And somebody might say, well, geez, what if I'm doing it over you know, 20 times over the course of the day? Well, fantastic, because I've just left 20 more possible impressions. And by the way, uh, the, the, the same thing about wasting time, I've heard the same argument as it relates to doing research before a call. I don't have time to do research before a call. I'll tell you what, where people, where sales reps really need to be concerned about wasting time. It's the time that they're wasting when they're not doing some revenue producing activity. It's the time they're wasting on Facebook or checking their, their fantasy team or um, you know going on online to, to read something else or, or talking to, to someone else in their area. If you add up all that time, that's probably much more than the time you could leave 100 voicemails over the course of a day. All right, so I'm sold. I, I'm a firm believer in voicemails. And and folks, I, I want to be fully transparent here, okay, about me personally as we project upon ourselves. I personally am not great at checking my voicemail on my landline, that desk that still sits on my phone, on my desk, yeah, on my work. I'm actually better at checking the voicemail on my cell phone. I actually do check that much more regularly, but I am incredibly good at checking voicemail or voice messages sent to me or video messages sent to me on LinkedIn. So does that surprise you, Art, that that I might be less inclined on the landline, but certainly more attentive on the, on the mobile and definitely very attentive on social? Or are we all different? Well, obviously everybody is different. And that's why we can't make an assumption that everybody falls into the same category. So I want to make sure that, as you mentioned before, that I'm a multimodal here, that I'm leaving messages and impressions and not just messages, but, but value messages in a variety of different ways so that I can communicate with people the way that they accept their communication. And uh, something else too is, I mean, we call it voicemail, but ultimately it's a message, right? And the message is pretty much going to be the same or it should be the same, whether you're leaving it uh, on a recording, on a phone, on a landline, on, on a cell phone, if I'm giving it in a video, if I'm leaving it in a, a LinkedIn voice message, I'm leaving it in an in-mail, an email, uh, a fax, some people have those still, <laughs> you know, <laughs> whatever. Bottom line is we should probably be focusing, not probably, we definitely should be focusing more on the content of the messaging and not worry so much about what what is the mode in which I'm delivering it. And, and we should be using all of them. Uh, and be, because again, I don't know how somebody is going to, you know, what, what their, their favorite mode of communication is. All right, so let's jump into it in the sense of the start. We'll start with mistakes. We'll get to what you should be doing. But for the audience especially, um, what mistakes do you see people doing when it comes to leaving a voice message? Common mistakes. Oh, how much time do we have? Yeah. <laughs> Not as much as you need, I know. <laughs> And, and, and you know the, the the funny thing is is that these mistakes are the same today as they were 10 15 20 30 years ago and and actually they're more egregious today because we have the capability to to not make these mistakes and it, it's so much easier for us to to not make these mistakes Number one, and, and, and by the way, these mistakes apply to whether you're leaving a voicemail or, an opening statement, an opening statement being when I have the person on the phone live. When I when I do my workshops, I always tell people, you know what, I'm not going to cover how to create your voicemail because we're going to cover that in how to create your interest creating opening. And the only difference is the ending, which I'll go through here when we when we get to the uh, the part on, on what to do. But let's go through the mistakes. I would say by far the number one mistake that that people make on voicemail and opening statements is not having a anything of, of possible value for the listener. And I always call it possible value. 
uh, so many people say you need to have your value prop or your, or your elevator speech. The thing is, I don't know what's going to be a value to you until I actually speak with you and ask you questions. So I can surmise what may be a value to you based on what I know about you on based on research and, and also what I know about your industry and other similar people in your position. So so I call it possible value. So so that's the number one mistake, because too many people have the the me me's, which is I want to talk about me, my product, how great we are. And, and again, this hasn't changed over the years. This this is still the same. Too many people just want to talk about their thing. And I, I did uh, an entire YouTube video on that. It's quit talking about your thing. That'll get you in trouble. <laughs> I love that. Quick talk. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a kid at heart. You know, I love it. Sorry. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> ah, he said thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said thing. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> So the next, and, it, and it's closely tied into this, is not personalizing and customizing your, your possible value. And, th and this is where I alluded to before that there's, there's absolutely no reason for us to not know something about the people that we call. With a couple keystrokes and mouse clicks, I can find out a lot about you your organization, what's going on in your world. And the fact is today is that people have become professional ignorers. Feel free to tweet that one out, folks, at Art Subject. Professional ignorers means that we have to ignore almost all of the messages we receive daily because we get so many. There's no possible way that we can pay attention to most of them. And however, we do pay attention to some of them. Which ones? The ones that are about who? Us. No kidding. Boy, there's some rocket science, right? That hasn't changed either. And it, I mean, if I just go in and listen to my voicemails from today, uh, I think probably five of them, yeah, f four of them had absolutely no value. And of course, they were not about me at all. And the one that had some possible value didn't even allude to me or anything that was going on in my world personally. Now, how do we create attention? How do we make someone curious when we set ourselves apart from everybody else out there who's trying to get some of our attention? When some message says, this is all about Daryl. Now, when you see that or hear, hear or see that message, you're going to lean in a little bit. That doesn't mean you're going to buy, but it's the first step in getting you into a conversation. So that is the, the second major mistake. And another here's another one. And it's the same on voicemail or it's the same on, uh, especially on opening statements and in and, and, and emails too, as well. And I think there's some template out there. Somebody must be teaching this. It's, it goes like this. Hey, Daryl, Art Subcheck here with Business by Phone. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm one of the world's greatest sales trainers as it relates to, to inside sales. been doing this forever. I've helped millions of companies generate untold billions and billions of dollars. And uh, what I want to do is get on your calendar and take 15 minutes of your time. Oh, I hate that voicemail. So that I can tell you what I do. Okay. So please reply and let me know when I can take 15 minutes of your time. You may as well say, Daryl, can I have $300 out of your wallet right yes. now? Yes. Because if I ask for your time, that's more valuable than money. And the thing is, is that most of these messages have not even given them a reason to listen to the rest of your message, let alone give you 15 minutes of your time. So here's the thing. We should not we should not be asking for a decision in an opening statement or voicemail. Actually, we do. The biggest decision we want somebody to make is that they are going to reply or give us a time when um, we might be able to ask them some questions, okay? And uh, again, when, when, when salespeople say, on, especially on a live phone call, and, and again, I know we're talking about voicemail, but, but this is one of my pet peeves. When somebody gets somebody on the phone live, I mean, think about it. That's one of the biggest challenges for salespeople today, to get somebody on the phone live. And it always kills me when somebody gets me on the phone live and I answer my own phone. 
where they say, well, what I'd like to do is to is to get on your calendar uh, for 15 minutes so that we can discuss this, this and this. And I always say to them, why? Why would you want to set up another call when you have I me on the phone? Right I know. Now? Yes, I've had this conversation over and over again. I do not get it. I, I, I'm with you. Yes, I'm sorry. I know what's going on, but yes, I with you. I hate it. Hate it. Maybe they're so surprised they actually got somebody on the phone. They don't know what to say. It is. But that's exactly what it is. It, anyway, I, I I digress. So those those are the three major mistakes: no value, not customizing and personalizing the message and asking for 15 minutes of someone's time. So here's here's all we're trying to do with our voicemail message. Are, are everybody sitting down out there? Okay, okay. hold I that mean, thought, hold that thought, hold that thought. All right. I want to I tease them. We're going to go for a all break, right. and when we come back, he's going to tell you what, you what you need to do. We'll be right back. All right. I interrupted him, folks. He was about to give you the gold. He was about to give you everything you wanted to hear because you've heard what you're doing wrong. But we're back. And you stayed around. Thank you so much. A serious question. How many of you fast forwarded, did the jump ahead button 30 seconds, ignore the commercial because you wanted to hear him? Uh huh. I'm with you. I do too. Art, tell us what to do. Okay, here's the thing. Everybody, are you sitting down out there? Because this is mind blowing. Matter of fact, I, I, I sh this should require a permit. <laughs> Here is, here is what you're trying to do with your voicemail message. Leave a question in the listener's mind that they want the answer to. That's it. I can hear the minds exploding out there right now all over the screens. So there we go. We're, we're not trying to sell. We're not going to try how to tell how great we are. We're not asking for a decision. We want to leave a question in somebody's mind where they're thinking, huh, okay. Yeah, got my attention. I wonder what that is, or I wonder how they do that, or uh, I, I wonder what that process is. So we want to make them curious enough so that several thing, one of several things might happen. And I do suggest backing up a voicemail with an email. So perhaps we'll get them to reply to the email. Or when our call comes back in again, because that's the way I suggest we end a voicemail by saying, and I will call you back on whatever day. So when our call comes back in, they look at that caller ID and they see our name or number again. Now they might be thinking, oh, that's that guy that said he might be able to help us get more store traffic without any increase in advertising expense. Hmm. Okay, maybe I'll pick that one up. So that's what we're trying to do. Leave that question they want the answer to. Because if you give the whole story and they can make the decision that they don't ever want to talk to you, guess what? They never talk to you. I got to admit, that would work for me. You know, if someone called me up and left a voicemail saying, hey, Daryl, it's George. Um, listen, I want to share with you how I was able to help your, comp your competitor, insert competitor name, um, grow their uh, free trials by... 22%. If you want to know how we did it, give me a shout back. Uh, if I don't hear from you, I'll reach out to you again. If I had that, I would be intrigued and I would either wait for him to reach out to me again because I know he's going to do it again and next time I would pick up the phone or if I had the time, I would actually call him back. I'm not saying I, I, I want his product, but I do want to know how he accomplished that goal because if I can learn, why wouldn't I want to do that? Because I have deliverables I have to do. So that would work for me. Well, you better get ready for all the phone calls and voicemails you're going to get with that <laughs> message now. <laughs> okay, so your point is craft an interesting voicemail, and, and I think you said it serves one purpose, and to do that, you leave a question. And that one purpose is not to get 15 minutes on their calendar right now, correct? No, no, not at all. Because, I mean, you, you don't even know if you want them on your calendar for 15 minutes. Yeah, perhaps you do. 
But, but we don't even want to say that. I mean, here's the thing. When somebody hits you cold with a request for something, what is the natural human reaction to that? Uh, we, we, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, <laughs> yes, yes. It's resistance. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's total, it's the yeah. Flight. It's yep. natural flight emotion. It's like, well, wait a minute. Wait. It's like the person coming up to you again in the retail store. May I help you? No, just looking. Person yes. running up to you with a with a survey. Oh no, I you know I, get away from me. But if I hint at something very conversational, this is what we've done. I know you're in a similar situation. I know something about you. And basically, I'd like to ask you a few questions. See if it might make sense for us to have a conversation. That's good. All right. So let me ask a question. Let me ask a loaded question. I leave that voicemail. They don't call me back. I call again. Do I leave another voicemail? And if I do leave another voicemail, is it different? Yeah, this, this is funny. And it's actually kind of a pet peeve of mine because I'll, I'll get that question quite a bit in workshops and people go, okay, well, what should I leave on the second and third voicemail? Let me ask you a question. Does Walmart change their slogan every week? <laughs> no, they don't. They do not. <laughs> no. And, and I think any, anybody that, that has a big gun, a, a big valid, possible value proposition, that's the one that's, that's likely going to get somebody interested. And by the way, a big premise of advertising is repetition. The more we hear something, the more it's going to sink in, especially if we're agreeing with it. I mean, I don't make this stuff up. This is psychologically proven. So why in the world, if I have created, a, a again, a possible value proposition in my voicemail based on the research that I've done about Daryl, and a vanilla soft or you and your podcast, whatever it is that I'm potentially selling that may be able to help you get something or avoid something, why would I wanna change that? I wanna reinforce that. So what I'm going to do is leave that message again and I'm not going to say, you didn't respond to my voicemail. Well, oh, geez, hate Captain that. Captain Obvious. Hate that. No, yep. no kidding, right. So. And, and, and by the way, if you sent a pre-approach email, which is fine, and by the way, what should go in the email? Pretty much the same thing that's in the voicemail. We're in, and by the way, please, please, please don't put in your email. And when can I get 15 minutes on your calendar? No, the, the email should do the same thing as your voicemail. Pique some curiosity and get, get a reply. So what I want to do is... I, if I send a pre-approach email, I might say, and as I mentioned in my email to you, what I do is specialize in working with, helping them to, and we've done this for other companies, helping them get a result of, and I'd like to ask you a few questions, see if it might be worth a conversation. So that's the biggest decision I want you to make is to see if it might be worth a future conversation based on answering some questions. But again, the whole premise here is the possible value that you're wondering, okay, I'm similar to those people. He helped them get those results. Those are the results that I want. I wonder how they did it. Might be worth just exploring a little bit. All right. Again. So, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut you off here shortly because we're, we're running out of time and I want, to, I want to change gears dramatically. So, folks, voicemails, okay? Follow Art. Listen to his podcast, theartofsales.com. All right. He buys books, smart calling. All right. All this stuff is about the voicemail. Now, I want to talk briefly about the fact that if you liked everything Art said, you can actually see him live and in person and continue this very conversation. And that is because Art is going to be a speaker at Outbound 2020. If you don't know it, Vanilla Soft's the title sponsor is taking place May 5th to 8th in Atlanta. Art, what are you going to be talking about at the conference? Well, I am so excited to be at Outbound because it is the premier event for what I consider to be the best of the best of the sales profession. And those are the people that use the phone because we all know that using the phone is harder than communicating face to face. So I consider anybody doing outbound the elite sales pros of our profession. And thank you, by the way, to Vanillasoft for sponsoring 
this great event. So what am I going to be talking about? I'm going to be talking about more of the same of what we just discussed here, except we're going to be rolling up our sleeves. Everybody will. And I'm going to give you a template where we can pretty much fill in the blanks and you're going to create your own interest peaking opening statement slash voicemail message that you will be able to use when you walk out of that room. Now, there are some preliminary steps that I'll touch on before I get there. Matter of fact, I would suggest that you get a copy of Smart Calling before you come so you can talk about, or so you could be well-versed in, in those steps because we, again, we need to do our research. We wanna do our social engineering, which is talking to people other than a decision maker prior to getting that decision maker on the phone. We wanna set our objectives for the call. And then we wanna prepare our messaging. And uh, we're going to work on that while we're there. We're going to be filling in the blanks. And then what we'll be doing is we'll re be reviewing some of the things that people come up with live. So, so one of my superpowers that I've developed over the past 35 years is being able to take someone's messaging and just tweak a word here or there because words make a difference. And uh, sometimes I can, I can make something stronger by taking words out and maybe even by replacing words that can make the difference between getting hung up on or getting somebody to say, oh, sounds good, well, yeah, let's talk. And really that's what we're trying to, to accomplish. So this is truly going to be a workshop. I tend to be, I, 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 I really, I'm a pretty simple guy. I don't like to be at the 30,000 foot level because I'm afraid of heights. So I, I tend to be at the ground level and uh, we're gonna work on the things that you can actually say. Because in all my years of doing this, what I found is that as salespeople, we, we tend to have one thing in common, and that is, what do I say when I have that person on the phone? Well, we're, we're gonna be working on that, and it's gonna be something that's proven that you'll be able to use right away to get the response that you're looking for. Okay, folks, you heard it here. He's the man. He's the rock star with the phone. He's got the books. He's got the podcast. He's got the business. He's got the street cred. He's a trailblazer. And he's speaking at Outbound. He mentioned it was the, the epitome show of the whole season of where you want to go. The, the best of the best. And he's there. And he's going to get down and dirty. He's suggesting you read the book first. Uh, smart, uh, so Smart Calling. Buy it. Read it. Book your ticket. Go to OutboundConference.com. There's a discount code. It's in the show notes. In the meantime, Art. Thank you so much for telling us about voicemail. Everybody, I'm Daryl Prale. I'm with Inside, Inside Sales. We'll talk to you soon. You take care. Bye-bye.